Greetings, fellow humans. Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. Today, we're taking a look at a much anticipated keyboard from MonsGeek, the MonsGeek M1W. Now, they currently do have a bare bones listed on their website, but this is a fully pre built version they will be releasing on or about August 15th. Now, this keyboard does come preloaded with your choice of switches, but Mine that I'm taking a look at today are preloaded with the new Akko Piano V3 Pro switches, as well as 1.6 millimeter thick double shot side shine through PBT OEM keycaps. This keyboard's also loaded with a PC plate, of course, gasket mount, both case PE foam as well as plate and PCB PE foam. It is also loaded with two 4,000 milliamp hour batteries for a total of 6,000 milliamp hours of juice. They have also redesigned the knob on this new version, and you will not encounter the issues that some encountered with their regular M1. It is a very smooth and nice knob. In going through the different builds for the sound test that I supply today, I found there to be numerous tiny little revisions that make the PCB fit much snugger in the case and also allows for much more flex than I was able to achieve with my regular M1. So not only have they added wireless functionality, both 2.4 gigahertz and Bluetooth 5.0 with three device slots, but they've also made minor improvements to this already great keyboard. Now, currently the bare bone does list for $109.99 and I do believe they will be listing this one preloaded for $129.99, though don't quote me on that as I do not know the final price as of yet. Now, opening up this keyboard uh, takes just six screws, three long ones for the top and three short ones for the bottom. We open it up and we find that we have two JST connectors, one for the daughter board. That's more of a little encased USB connector, uh, USB-C connector. And we also have one for the series of two 3000 milliamp hour batteries. It also includes what's called a VHB insulation layer, which is just a very thin sheet of non-conductive plastic uh, to prevent any type of shorts. As always, this is a south facing LED keyboard. So you will not have any interference despite regardless of switches or keycap profile. So for today, I wanted to deliver a few different sounds that I was able to finesse with very little effort. I first, I provide a stock sound test. After the stock sound test, I applied the force break mod so that you can hear the difference between the two. After doing the force break mod, I decided to take out uh, the foam in the case and do a sound test as well. And then after that, I decided to do just a quick modification where I used the included tape sheet to do a Tempest tape model though. I'd rather kind of do it with tape the normal way. And I replaced the PE foam in the case with a little bit of polyfill and also did a sound test as well. I think MonsGeek has delivered yet another great in-stock keyboard for a great price. It's hard to find 75% that are this well built, that are even close to this price, let alone meet or match this price point. I think MonsGeek has hit another home run out of the park with this keyboard, and I don't think anyone will be dissatisfied if they were to choose this as their keyboard of choice. Now, it will be available as others in black, silver, and purple. 
and should be listed on their website on or about August 15th. In the box, we find that it has a Tempest tape mod sheet. It also has a dust cover, includes individual switch and keycap pullers, and also comes with the force brake mod gaskets. Now, this is preloaded with plate mounted stabilizers and also include an extra set of plate mounted stabilizers, which are the double shot TPU. It also includes a nice coiled USB-C cable with metal connectors, the USB-A 2.4 gigahertz dongle. I've quite enjoyed the Monsky keyboards I've gotten to review, especially in the M series. And I look forward to the many models that they do have planned for this and other series upcoming. Thankfully, Monsky cloud software is powerful enough to accomplish pretty much anything that you'd like to do. It's just that for those of us that don't run Windows, we're going to either need a virtual machine or a separate Windows machine in order to do our programming. It does allow for per key programming, does have layers, um, and does have the functionality for macro programming as well. Not only is this keyboard lovely looking, I think it sounds pretty good as a pre-built, not quote unquote, it really is, um, though it's a pre-built that you can modify to your own desires. But even stock without the force break, I think that this sounds better than a lot of other keyboards in this price range or higher. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you with a small section of each of the sound tests that I performed, as well as a super cut of all three. I will be coming back to this keyboard to do a lot more modifications to it and to see what kind of sounds we can get out of it, because I think a different different combination of switches, keycaps, as well as dampeners will make four different sound profiles. I think that there is a range of sound profiles that this keyboard can offer depending on the mods applied. So I do hope that you enjoyed this quick review of the Mons Geek M1W. And if you have any questions, please leave them below. And if you have any suggestions for mods that you'd like to see me apply either to this one or to the original M1, let me know and I'll do my best to get to them. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.